Welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardinellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everybody. And we got a really interesting lead here from Jonathan Herzog, one of the delegates that sued the state of New York over, um, sued with Andrew Yang over the primary in uh, New York. And there's a very bizarre claim of some kind of possible tampering by Google or the search engines of the information about him as a result of him having sued the state. There's something really bizarre going on, and we're trying to put a pinpoint on what it is. But th this is strange. Cody, tell us what's going on. Okay, so I guess really quickly, I want to run through a little bit of background. So you brought up the name of the individual. Yes, the Jonathan Herzog is a, I guess you could say, Yang Gang alumni. I believe he did volunteer for the campaign and actually is one of the seven delegates that were suing the state of New York with Andrew Yang. Yeah, Andrew he's Yang on delegates. the lawsuit itself. Uh, which actually is kind of gets into the, it gets into what happened here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, though, also he uh, listed here as the candidate for the 10th District of New York, which would be the same district that Jerry Nadler currently represents. Alumni of Harvard and Andrew Yang joined the movement here, Herzog 2020. Anyway, that's who this individual is. But he recently has reached out to, and I guess I've heard he's reached out to many organizations to look into this because something really interesting happened. So one of the, and this is one thing that's kind of weird. Normally I don't like using Breitbart that much, not because I have the biggest problem. I think all news is kind of crap. So when someone says that news is crap, yeah, they all are. But this was the only place I could really see running a, a big coverage. This was interesting because the story is kind of fascinating. Now they're, of course, hyping up the Jerry Nadler kind of more yeah. right wing Ben, but listen to some of the stuff. He went after here. their boy. <laughs> yeah, but some of the stuff in here is really interesting and worth noting. So they mentioned that New York House candidate Jonathan Herzog, the leading Democrat challenger to House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jerry Nadler, suspects he may have fallen victim to a digital manipulation campaign following his campaign's first digital ad against Nadler. Uh, Herzog's campaign ad against Nadler was released Wednesday evening. I believe, I'll show you the ad, I believe it was against Nadler. He just kind of says, hey, like I'm running against a vote for me, but it was mostly celebrating the recent victory against the state of New York. Keep yeah. that in mind. So they go on to mention that this is a statement that was released by his campaign on Friday. Saying, immediately following our campaign's release of its first digital ad for our race to unseat Representative Nadler, we noticed widespread Google news manipulation with thinly thinly veiled death threats on local news sites owned by the Sinclair Broadcast Group. Uh, they go on to mention hundreds of articles with headlines such as man goes to clear out dead mom's home, finds body in freezer, trucker charge and killings, Linda Tripp whistleblower in, in in Clinton case dies and et cetera, et cetera. They mentioned the digital ad celebrated Herzog's recent win in the fight to hold a June 23rd presidential primary. And I believe, uh, oh, well, they removed it. They used to have the actual ad. I'll pull the ad up for you guys to see in one second as well. Um, they also mentioned that Congress still had recess. That's a little bit of background of what's going on here. But then here's the interesting thing. So I went to look into this a little bit we more. We basically went to corroborate this. We well, yeah, replicate it, right? So I'm yeah. going to show you guys, and we're going to, it's going to seem weird, but I, I went to three different popular search engines on a uh, private browser, and I typed in, Jonathan Herzog, individual's name. I want to see what comes up. So, type in Jonathan Herzog on DuckDuckGo, which is probably the only time I'll ever use DuckDuckGo yeah. <laughs> as a control when weighing it against what, what yeah. Google, what the real search results come up. But anyway, uh, you'll notice here a Newsweek article talking about Andrew Yang suing the New York cancellation of primaries. By the way, Jonathan Herzog was one of the yeah. One of the seven that helps sue him. That uh, makes sense. Another a Democrat interview he did with Fox News 46 days ago. Uh, guest opinion, as a Jewish mother, my greatest commitment is building the faith of my children. I believe they'll also have the interview he did with another a Jewish publication. But you'll notice it's pretty, uh, mostly stuff about the big high-profile lawsuit against the state of New York. Which again, okay. was, really, it was really goofy. The lawsuit, seriously... The state of New York tried to just remove names from the ballot that weren't Joe yeah. Biden for president, for Democrat. They, it was phrased as canceling, which it would be, but it was like, it was still going to happen. You could only vote for Joe Biden. Yeah. Very, very weird. Uh, anyway, though, so then I went to another website. I only go to, I'm getting a control to compare against Google. Bing. It's yeah. anything famous kind of Bing. Uh, but again, you'll notice mostly the same Newsweek article, Fox News stuff from about a month ago. Um, don't know why he came up with this. Uh, probably just key terms. Bing, bing, bing. Uh, Timothy Chalamet sits London stage debut. But what's really important is look at what it says right here, the kind of little lead or metadata, whatever you want to call it. You'll notice, go through, uh, Yang sues New York canceling the primary. They These are much mentioned. more traditional responses yeah. you would expect that saying, are demonstrative this of is, him. Yeah. That's what I figured it'd get, right? But then, yeah, you go to Google and you find something really weird and really bizarre, and I, I do have to admit a little bit inexplicable. Um, so you go through, and the first thing that comes up is a Jewish insider interview with him from 11 hours ago. That isn't weird. But then you get into what his claims are, and you'll notice something, too. They mentioned the Sinclair Broadcast Group. Every one of these websites you see with the same exact thing, and I want you to also feel something. Notice again what this first line says here underneath the headline. It says, Jonathan Herzog has been feeling triumphant lately, 25-year-old alumni, yada, yada. 
But now look at these for every one of these articles. Two held in Los Angeles store fight over not wearing mask. What? And you read the description. Attorney Jeff Curzon representing Yang in Congressional Canada that Jonathan Herzog said he was thankful a judge about the laws. That's weird. Tennessee Uber driver jumps out a car to escape kidnapper. Indiana Attorney General. Then these are all KMPH yeah, Fox. Sus- is but then it goes Attorney to, General suspended yeah. for groping. I mean, these are yeah. intense but headlines. Then it, go, then it goes to WTOV Steubenville. And again, you'll notice every single one of these is the same thing. That same copy pasted attorney Jeff Curzon representing Yang and congressional candidate Jonathan Herzog. But if we go to this, we go to KHQA, street ball scene on hiatus. Well, guess what? Attorney Jeff Curzon representing, and it doesn't really end there. You can go over a couple pages where you read an article, right? MRID officials say fire strikes site of Dubai's Expo 2020. What is that about? Well, it turns out that attorney Jeff Curzon is representing, and it just, UK PM Boris Johnson. And then again, you go to these actual actual um, articles. Let me see if I can pull up the one I showed you originally about yeah. the two held in the Los Angeles store fight. Nowhere in the article itself does it make any mention at all, at all, of what was shown to us in the Google thing, which is really weird. And then again, to get back to his specific claims against the Sinclair Group, you'll notice, again, this is Fox 26, local affiliate, owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. Yeah. Uh, KHQA7, local affiliates, owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. Yeah. And then one more, WTOV9, Fox, owned by Sinclair Broadcasting. So I'll use the exact same website formula. It's actually really interesting to note, you'll see this, Every single one mm-hmm. of these articles, which, by the way, the re- retirees isolated by the virus become DJs for new radio hour. I was told I'd be learning about my boy uh, Jeff Curzon, and um, I'm and, uh, learning and, about retiree and DJs. <laughs> and instead, but every single one of them, and just to highlight just how these are uniform on the back end. Every one of these articles, when you get to the fold, they'll take you to the same article. Tesla parking lot nearly fold. I'll go to the next article. Street ball. By the way, no mentions of a boy in the street ball article. And we go right to long street ball article. By the way. Tesla parking lot, another one, our, our, our fight over the masks, Tesla parking lot. So you might feel like uh, one of the kind of confusing thing a lot of these people do. All these articles, by the way, I think were written by AP and just piped into these websites. Yeah. Um, but it is fascinating, man, that only on Google and only in Sinclair Broadcasting owned affiliates are we seeing this. Over and over and over and over. I mean, it just, and they just, yeah, some of this stuff is crazy. Like, angry woman at Whataburger drive through cuts in line, damages another car. And it just keeps going. I mean, I think you can see like two or three pages in. Mike Pence, task force members, isolate after virus exposure. Stuff that has nothing to do with him. However, with that same line. And again, they're all these same Sinclair broadcasting affiliates with that exact same line there. That attorney Jeff Curzon representing Yang in congressional Canada, Jonathan Herzog, said he was thankful the judge upheld the laws. That's with a veteran group braced for surgeon mental. And it just keeps going, going, going. Now, like I said, he's he's reached out to, and I want to make sure I can pull these up and just get. So right Jonathan from Herzog has reached out. Yes, to sorry, us. the candidate has reached. He's also reached out to, um, I believe, the New York Attorney General, as well as the uh, OIG and think of other organizations. Basically, the Office of the Inspector because here's General, the thing: yeah. the, the the full context here. Hey, that's kind of weird. That's happening. He's running for office. And, and it just only put started a, happening when he started running for office see, against Jeremy Nadler. That'd be the adju- Okay. The allegation was they started to become noticeable and really prevalent. After his first digital ad run, that was that was the uh, yeah. Specific. So it sounds kind of like he's got similar claims as Tulsi Gabbard had, saying, "Hey, I had all of this money lined up after the uh, debates, so that when I garnered attention from being on the debate stage, boom, I could get all of these Google ads out." But then for eight hours. Google had shut down my account. They had specifically targeted me. It was politically motivated. It sounds kind of like he's making a similar claim, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. He's saying, hey, hold on a second. Here I am running for office against a very prominent Democrat who's going uh, basically one of the biggest antagonists besides Adam Schiff uh, Schiff, uh, against Donald Trump, okay? And as soon as I run my first targeted ad and I start doing a digital campaign, this happens to me. I get dragged into all of these negative headlines that have nothing to do with who I am or my campaign, and it's affecting him, basically, his ability to be perceivable in well, cyberspace. Bottom line, that's one way of phrasing it. Bottom line is if you're running for office and someone goes into Google, what's like we were joking about earlier, is the only real search engine, right? Like, it, yeah. not like it just, it just like literally is the. Such dominant market share. That's what everyone uses. Not for those elevated souls like me that use Ask Jeeves. Sure, whatever. <laughs> Point being, when you go into the most prominent search engine and you type in his name, 
you get a bunch of headlines like two held in Los Angeles store fighter for not wearing masks. Yeah, right? you're negative Uber, by association. Yeah, you're finding these things. And the other thing it does too, by the way, it buries, you know what I'm not finding? I'm not finding articles talking about how he worked with Andrew Yang and six other delegates to sue the state of New York and get other names put back on the ballot. You don't see that. See, it's not only the fact that it's bumping up the bad news. It's driving down the good things. He, it's driving down the news he wants you to see. Well, we couldn't find eight pages in good news about it. Yeah, but, but, we had to go to a completely not different even that. server. Like I said, you go to any other search engine and they're going to tell you the thing everyone looks for. Oh. You're searching for Jonathan Herzog. You probably want to know about him and his lawsuit that he did with Andrew Yang at the state of New York. Even even Bing gets that right, man. Even yeah. Bing is like, oh, you mean you mean the guy? But you'll notice with Google, it's it's these weird jumble. I'm on page one here, if you guys can see. Um, it's a weird jumble of just random Sinclair Broadcasting local affiliates changing every single one of their article to mention him in the in the Google metadata and then mention him nowhere else. And it's really weird, man. But it's one of the reasons I want to highlight is it's one of the things where it, it, it's a great way to highlight. And it's one of the things that's really scary is people are smart. You're not messing with morons. People are smart. All they have to do is think, wow, that was a, what a weird, funny glitch or error in our system. That's cleared up. Uh -huh. But you see how remarkably effective it could be. I mean, on Google, Jonathan Herzog, the candidate, functionally doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Instead, all you're going to get is a barrage of bizarre local affiliates totals. Like, if you want to just Google search information about this congressional candidate, he doesn't exist. You're going to hear about the Dubai, Ukraine hospitals, uh, Georgia officials say the additional video evidence. Look, look at the, the arbor. Everything is, you're going to find everything but who this guy is and why he's running. And that is what one of the great ways they'll shoulder people out of the way who try to run against the, the status quo. And you and I just talked just about bury you. Yeah, you and I just barely talked about in a previous video about Andrew Yang's voice being manipulated by Vice or possibly just being recorded so poorly that whoever did it didn't know the difference or else was just so wildly incompetent they put it up anyway. Do do you think that this kind of widespread digital misrepresentation could be due to incompetence over at Google? Or attributed to malice because he pissed somebody off by being part of that lawsuit against the Democrat stronghold and uh, Joe Biden's primary. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but I think like functionally doesn't matter. The truth will always be that it was a mistake. Because you can't really yeah the I official mean, truth unless you get the memo that says hey we're screwing this guy right yep this is how I'm doing it it's like there's a, there's a movie role models and they have the video footage of the guy and he's standing in a warehouse like I can't believe it it's me John whatever stealing televisions you know what I mean like oh yeah unless we get the smoking gun of them confessing on tape yeah it probably just is hey weird mistake for some reason one random line in one of our articles got every one of our articles and every one of our websites had that in the Google description. Hey, really weird, don't know why it happened. We fixed it now though. Like, like I, unless you get the memo or the email, that'll always be. And even if you get the memo or the email, generally speaking, it's way bigger deal to like hold them accountable than it is to just kind of move under the table and keep going. People will just do that. And it, it, it it's crazy. I mean, it seriously is like you're in different realities because of this bug when you search for his name on Google and when you search for his name on Bing. And I, don't, I, I talk about Bing all the time. It's like different realities. Even Bing's got dumb stuff in here. But it's because for whatever reason, and again, keep in mind, every single one of, every single one of these local affiliates that are bugged out like this are on the Sinclair uh, Broadcasting family. They all use the same uniform website. Like I showed you, every single one of these articles literally funnels you into this Tesla article because they're just the same website with different URLs that get to it, but it's all the same website. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's what we have now. I'm, I'm definitely would love to hear more. I'd love to hear a statement. But again, I, I'm the statement is just going to be that. It's going to be, hey, we made a mistake. Sorry, it's been fixed. We apologize for any. But issues. the damage is already done. It's kind of like when we get copyright yes. struck. He by doesn't exist on are, Google, but th th yeah. they'll, they'll apologize. Sinclair will say, are bad. And yeah. then, yeah, and then what are you going to do? You're going to hold Sinclair Broadcasting, Google, and like, who are you going to hold accountable? Even if there was someone who made the decision, who are they? You're never going to find them. And it's it's what's so frustrating. Now, it's one of the reasons why it's so important that I'm glad he is he's making, making noise about this because it, there's so much. There is a little bit of there there. We'll wrap up here. But there is a little bit of there to the idea that a lot of these social service, these networks and stuff, they realized 
shadow banning, for example. They realize what yeah. that means. And by shadow banning, just the idea of you can use a platform, but they'll just make it so no one actually sees anything you say. So it feels like you're writing stuff, but no one really sees it, right? They, they don't do that so no one can see what you say. They do that because they know it will discourage you off the platform. They know they'll go, wow, dang, like, I guess nobody interacts with anything I say. I guess no one yeah. likes my tweets. I guess they just not use Twitter. Even though no one's interacting with my tweets because they can't see them. That's what they want to happen. They want people to just go, wow, I guess, like, people just don't really find me. I guess they're just not good at the internet. I guess they'll just, like, you know. They don't They don't want you to look around and go, well, hold on a minute. Why is Sinclair Broadcasting nuking me off the Google results? Yeah. Why are they throwing these awful stories in your face with my name attached to them on Google? You click on them, I'm nowhere to be found, and you can't find any of the good articles about me that actually yeah. are about me because they're buried on page five. But they all they want you to do is they want you to give up. They want you to say yeah. no matter what I do, I can't I can't fight you and you want you want a little subtle a little subtle hint you can't fight us how about Sinclair Broadcasting working with Google a little subtle yeah. hint like yeah, good luck <laughs> good luck holding one of the largest news broadcasting corporations in the world and like like technically you're talking about just two of the largest you know under the umbrella like communications businesses yeah two of the largest ones as far as interfacing with people I mean, I know well Sinclair like Broadcasting stuff, Group got big in the news about a year and a half ago because didn't a bunch of investors or friends of Steve Bannon's purchase it. And I remember there was that big meme floating around the internet where all of the local news affiliates were talking about how dangerous fake news is. And then somebody edited up like the 36 different stations nationwide that they control, all saying the exact same monologue, representing it as this kind of 1984 dystopian takeover of our, you know, thought police and, and, and propaganda and so on and so forth. Um, it makes me wonder what would what would be the motive because before we want to say okay cool this is politically motivated and somebody was messing with the Google results which personally is 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 what I'm trending towards right now I, I don't see how this could be an honest mistake when you're you're eight pages in before you find an honest article about a guy that's going up against one of the most powerful Democrats okay there there's no way any kind of natural search results that are algorithmically found are going to be excluding this information unless somebody's manipulating it, okay? So what would the motivation be, though? Because you do have to prove motive before you can say there's some kind of crime. And if Sinclair's a Bannon outfit, they'd love to make this Herzog guy look good to pump him up to get rid of Nadler and show, oh, well, hold, look, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't see what the... Okay, I don't hold see on. You're just, I guess you've just adopted this conspiracy theory as fact and are saying, well, if this conspiracy theory is no, fact I'm saying together, if it were, what would the motive who be? Who cares about some dumb, Sinclair broadcasting conspiracy theory? How about this? He had the audacity to run against Jerry Nadler, who's been in office for how many years? He had the audacity to think he could step into New York City at 25 years old, sue the state for trying to get rid of the primary for the president. That's why. They don't. Why do you think the Democrats have no young rising stars? They do stuff like that. I'm not saying, no offense, I'm not saying he's going to be the next Obama. My point being is, they they don't want anybody challenging these people. They don't want anyone replacing Jerry Nadler. Who's the they? The Democrats? Yes, sorry, the, the, the establishment. Okay, but how, oh, you're sorry, saying that now main, the Democrats the, are coordinating with Sinclair? I have no idea. I, I have no idea. That, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't work in the at CIA. I don't work in the deep state. I don't, you know, what I mean, I have no idea the backstage machinations. But I'm telling you this. That's a great word. This by individual had the audacity to sign onto a lawsuit suing the state of New York because they were removing names from a ballot. They were saying everyone dropped out. Well, they suspended their campaign, so only Joe Biden will be on the ballot. They sued and they lost that lawsuit. And they're actually, I think, they're trying to fight back against it. But it looks like the state of New York might be limiting lockdowns to the point where by the time the election happens, it'll be a moot point. Anyway, he's running as Jerry. How long has Jerry Nadler been in office? Like it's it's one of yeah. those things. Like Democrats love talking about getting new blood in, but when people say, "How about these people that have been in?" They office? They want to get new door knockers and new workers. No, but they not say, new, "Yeah." New when people say, "But these people have been in office forever." It's not even not even they were, they were talking about Jerry Nadler. It's not even to say all these people that are being replaced are like the worst politicians ever. But it's like you do not realize yeah. the young politicians have to replace somebody. And I guess you could live as a fantasy land where the only young politicians for either party flip seats. But guess what? You're going to have to take your safe seats and put new people in them you, yeah you have you can't just let somebody say well it's safe so they could just sit there for 40 years unless they're a good stooge and do what they're told in which case hey that's a valuable asset and they don't want someone like jonathan herzog coming and thinking he can win the seat away yeah. I, I think that's the bigger thing is they don't want people thinking they could actually win when i say they i, I, I try to not say they but 
the, the establishment politicians, not only the Democrats, but the political establishment, the people who've been in office 30 years, the people who do this stuff, I mean, you're talking about New York City, that district, we looked it up in particular, what is it? It's like the Bronx and Manhattan, right? We're talking about places that yeah. have had political influence for a while, right? Just as far as like people who represent, anyway, my point being is they don't want new people coming in and shaking things up. I think that's the, the reason why. The, the 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 establishment will always be threatened by anything coming to reform or replace it. They see young candidates. They see someone maybe, you know, suing the state, getting on Congress or being in recess. Somebody with agency, somebody who actually part of the Dame Jiang lawsuit had a win. And they go, eh, I got to pump the brakes. Can't let this guy thinking he can beat Jerry Nadler because we need him in office to do. That's the other thing, man. Like, we can only a- operate from our perspective, from the perspective of, like, let's say, Democratic establishment politics right there. They might say, hey, we have plans for Jerry Nadler. He's going to be doing this for us in a few years. And then we're going to be using Jerry Nadler to do this. Like, he has a role in our in our organization here. We don't want people just replacing him. Yeah. So I do think from, it might feel like nefarious and evil, but from their perspective, it might just be, we don't want this guy to get replaced. Let's help him out. But from our perspective, it's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous that this individual, like I said, essentially no longer exists on Google because he has been. And what's even worse is not only is he gone like you can't find him, all you can find is misinformation. Yeah. And that's what I think makes it even worse. So um, I I don't know what to think about this yet. I, I still have a couple of questions before I can form my opinion. I don't see quite the connection between the Democrat Party and the Sinclair Broadcasting Group because obviously in the past they've seemed to be uh, at ends with each other. But then again, it wouldn't be the first time there's this unholy alliance between uh, both of these people as, as you put it, but it does smack of it smacks and stinks of foul play. It just smacks and stinks of foul play. This whole it, thing. It's only, yeah. it's only Sinclair affiliates and it's only Google. That's what's weird too. Yeah. Now it also is another reason why it's a better way of doing it. It's one of the, it's the smart way of doing it. Cause you're able to say, Hey, weird issue on the Sinclair website. It just, oh, how unfortunate yeah. that there's so many Sinclair local affiliates with good SEO yeah. that they all are pumped to the very, because it's one thing if it happens, but it's like, it's weird. You have to go to like page 12 of Google and you're like, ah, oh, that's weird. They put some, but it's like page one, top result stuff. How yeah. does that happen? How do you get, how does it, how do I search for your name and I have an article that you're never once mentioned in that isn't about you and has nothing to do with you flood the first page? How does that happen? And again, it's just weird it happens to somebody challenging a status quo politician. Again, you say, well, but Sinclair might be on the right and Democrats. No, there's the politicians in the political class and them stepping on us. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I guarantee you, there could be a Republican picking up a phone and calling his buddies at Sinclair. I don't care. We have to step on this guy. He should not. And again, I I feel like it's the same thing companies do with shadow banning. They don't want to like throw you in jail. They don't want to take your name off a ballot, even though New York took some names off a ballot. They want to make it so difficult, frustrating, confusing for you, you give up. Because when you give up, people very rarely does somebody give up and then sue. Because ultimately, they can say, well, you gave up. You just yeah. kind of stopped. Like, well, like well, You know what I mean? Like If they can give you to give up, you're probably going to stop fighting. You're probably not going to sue them. You're not going to make a stink about it. You'll just give up and go away quietly. You're not going to run again. You're not going to say I got screwed. You're just going to be like, well, that sucked. And that's what they want to happen. So I, I'm I'm glad to see he's not doing that. And he's saying this is crazy. This should not be happening. Yeah. So I would like to know a little bit more if you guys have information that you know about this. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, thank you very much for Jonathan Herzog for con- uh, contacting us. Uh, giving this us this lead, alerting us to this fact. Um, I definitely want to know more, and we'll see if we can't follow up on this in a couple of days to see what what happens with this. Uh, because, as we said before, he has alerted the Office of the Inspector General and uh, has gone to a couple of other news outlets we know. So who knows? Hopefully they apply pressure. Hopefully we get to the bottom of this. Let us know what you guys think. Follow us on Twitter at PSP Radio 1. If you can contribute to the channel, it's a great way to keep these videos coming to you. Um, It's an inexpensive way to support us as well. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook and on Instagram at Problem Solver Politics. This is Problem Solver Politics. We'll see you guys in the next video.